You should have bet fair across the back and not Barber. There's a good coat there. Found this is great because it's got nothing else on it. Yeah, and it's clean. And it's clean. And it fits. It never used to fit. It's actually nice that because mm. you lost so much weight. Skinny mini. <laughs> You're going to have to start that again. Well, it's an absolutely gorgeous morning here in Somerset and I've made my way to a very famous box number one. I'm about to be eaten by Mon Morel. But I'm here to see Dad, who I'm going to go and try and find somewhere around the yard. We're going to see the horses out and about, hopefully when they're not trying to eat me in a minute and doing their exercise. But firstly, I'm going to go and find the boss. Dad! Come on! What? We've got to go. The yeah. dogs are being high maintenance. I don't want to make them Come on. So you got Go on. Yeah, so a Monday we do we'd, we'd school a lot of the horses that might run during the week. Everything else on a Monday that isn't got an entry during the week or this weekend is not school, we'll always do two up the hill on a Monday yeah. morning. And that's kind of your average day, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, just that's an easy day, even though they took they'll they'll all have an hour on the walker as well. Yeah. Okay, woo! You actually put a new walker in. Yeah. We, at the top yard. Yeah. Managed to. I've been talking to Mr. Barber for 30 years about pinching his vegetable garden, put the walker in, and eventually relented. I don't think there was many vegetables in no, it for the last couple of years. No, all weeds. It took me 30 years, but it's best best investment we've made for a long time. And we were on the limit that we can train 150 horses now, as you know. That's that's perfect. When Will Biddick has all the youngsters in pre-training for us, so you know, it gives us a lot of horses to run for a year. We wouldn't want to get any more than that. We've obviously got a lovely field that's on gravel that from November onwards we can put the hurdles out on so all the babies can go and sharpen up upsides on the grass and that's a, that's always a good thing. You did that a lot with Nappers Hill last yeah, year, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, and it improved Worked his wonders. jumping. But uh, on the whole, you get lots and lots of practice. You know, a lot of horses can gallop flat out. It's when they're going steady and got to think and fiddle and do different things that you have to use that. that You've makes always a big said difference. this school is, this the, is the main most, thing to their jumping. Yeah, absolutely. They might not be going fast, but they have to concentrate and they have to jump. The six barrels yeah. is something you've done for quite a long time in the yeah. ditch. Why is that? It just makes them look into the bottom and concentrate, really. Amazing. Demon, if you scored him round here with no barrels and he jump, put the blue barrels in, he'd go around there and stop every time. <laughs> Whoa, well, I'm not jumping that. <laughs> it does just make them look a little bit. Look, see? Yeah, very Stopped clever. Stopped into the board there. He's very clever there. That's good to see Mom Ral do that. Right. Put some muscle in. <laughs> you managed to win the trainer's title and it wasn't easy by any means because ultimately it looked as if you didn't really have a load of horses at the very top level but it's going to be similar this year all about the placing who's your biggest rival well last year i actually gave everyone half a chance i think in february and march because we definitely had a quiet spell there was a time when the horses run, weren't running particularly well and then after chant and they all came good and had a good entry and really good in the spring which always tends to happen for us yeah. um I, I think very much it's the same this year. I think Nicky's got a very strong team. If they all click, he's got a big chance. And I think Dan has got some very, very nice horses. Might lack a few of the top ones at the moment. Fergal set up a, a flying start. He's you know had nearly 200 more runners than us already. We haven't mm. even had 100 runners yet. I think Fergal's had 300. So he's set a good bar at the start and he'll keep going. Um, again, he might just lack some of those very top ones. Where, where all the big prize money is. Is it um, out of question that it could be an Irish trainer that gives well, you a run for your money? And it's poss quite possible. I mean, Willie Mullins has been there before and um, up to the last day at Sandland was right in the mix. If they had a fantastic chart and they targeted this country or the big races, it's possible. Yeah. I think it's very open this year. I think we've got uh, plenty to, on our plate to, to win. But it's, uh, it's me concentrating on the running them in the right races, it's being selected where you're running, not waste bullets. And I'm, I'm sure, sure we've got every chance, but it's not going to be easy. Never is easy, Never but you is seem easy, to you know, keep you, coming back. You, I'll keep you. trying. Once you've done decks, uh, well. Got no service. No, you talk away. I can just. Trying to multitask. No, looking so <laughs> looking uh, at his declaration. So obviously, uh, at the moment, 48 hour declarations for Wednesday. I'm trying to work out what to run Wednesday. I've got eight minutes left of declarations finished. See if one's getting balloted out, whether I put another one. So you've got to be on all the time with the declaration tracking. Plenty of your assistants have come out into your tra into mm. the training ranks now. Obviously, Dan Skelton, and Harry mm. Fry, to name a couple. I mean, how is it having them as once your staff and now your rivals? 
Well, I can read Dan like a book, you know, you know what he's going with. Dan's obviously got a good team, knows what he's doing. You know, they're always hard to beat. So, same with Harry Fry's really, and Christian Williams and Anthony Hannibal, they've all been here. The thing is to um, not teach them everything you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's good. They're proud of the fact all of them are doing well. They know how to do the job properly. And when you're here, naturally, you're going to learn a lot because yeah. You're, you're champion trainer multiple times. We've got some of the best horses, best facilities. Mm. It, it, you'd be a fool if you couldn't learn off, off this yeah. amazing operation and off you. Yeah, and all those kids learn a lot off Clifford. Um, you know, but you need good people like that. You need a good team. You need a good team of young jockeys, a good team of assistants that work with you. And you know, on the way, they're going to learn how to do it properly. And if anyone's here for five years, they're going to learn an awful lot. The late Andy Stewart, who was such an amazing owner for you for so many years, but also ultimately became one of your closest friends as well. Was a fantastic man and yeah, obviously it was a great loss when we, you know, lost him last year. Had some fantastic horses over the years, obviously Celeste, Halo, Pocklin, and you know, the amazing big bucks and it was so good for Andy to own a superstar horse like him. The horses run under the name of the Stewart family still. Paul and Mark really love the game, so you know, hopefully we can get some nice success for them. We've got some nice horses have their run so far this season for them. Usually I would be out there aboard one of these and I'm roles reverse here and obviously sort of having a chat with you. Quite recently I obviously retired. Fi yeah, finished early retirement, very young for someone who's retired. Um, finished race riding. I don't really know if that was a relief for you or I suppose a relief in the fact I'm not constantly badgering you to try and run something on the flat. Yeah, you, um, you, you got that all these phone calls, Dad, there's a flat race here, there's a flat race here, what do you think go at this? Could this Two run? miles of path, This Come is rated on. so and so. Um, <laughs> I, I know you had a good time on the flat, you had a good time, but you've got other things that you're doing now, you seem busy, I think probably it's the best thing. I think watching all the youngsters and all the people that you come in, unless you've got a top job and you're getting lots of rides, it's gonna be hard. Mm. And I think you're busy now, you're, as you said, you're out of my hair now with the flat horses, so it's, um, <laughs> It's not a bad thing, really. When I was still riding, I was lucky because Harry would ride them first and out when they're green, yeah. and then you'd let me ride them when I just yeah. had to point and go. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Steering jobs like Napa's Hill. Napa's Hill, yeah. The idea in my mind is to have them five years old, had two years school and ready to go novice hurdling. Yeah. As in Henry II is it this week. There we are. They've just had a little warm-up, really, and then we'll pair them up and they'll do a, a real nice sprint back. So that's all those horses there doing their second canter, and you see they're all coming along nicely. No, Sin, we're not throwing stones. Where did you put your ball? I was too young to remember it properly, but I remember stories about it. When this gallop used to be wood chip, there's been a couple of times you found the whole surface on the road, it had washed away. Yeah, this is the wood chip was quite difficult and the, the water would get underneath it, lift it up and it would all float off down the hill and end up in the road and we'd have to put it back, it was a disaster. <laughs> I think for the first nine years of training, all I had was that hill and a couple of fields and, and it was wood chip, as I say. As you obviously could afford to invest in the business and the gallops, we improved the gallops and now that's a Martin Collins gel track surface. Fantastic, doesn't move, no slippage, uh, drains, it's like, brilliant, but it's much better than the wood chip. You've obviously learned a lot yourself over the years with so many different horses and things. If you could go back, is there anything you think, oh, I wish I could have changed that earlier or, you know, uh, done something a different way? I don't think you ever look back. You always got to look forward. You always learn along the way. You know, we've learned to do lots of jumping. We love doing lots of jumping in here or on our loop outside. You know, if you don't jump, you don't win. And it's good exercise for them. So, yeah, I think jumping is a big key to what we do. Well, Dad, thank you so much for showing us around this morning. I obviously have loved coming back, seeing some of the young horses I haven't actually seen yet. And I think we've learned plenty and, and seen plenty of action. And one thing I do want to say is obviously best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you, yeah. A lot of nice young horses have you seen. Um, amazing amount of horses that have been run for us. Um, and we use a little insight for everyone what we do on a Monday. And you can see it's a never-ending story, never stops evolving. Mm -hmm.